Okay, so let's talk about how exponents work. <clears throat> the first rule we're going to talk about is called the multiplication rule. Whenever you're multiplying two terms with the same base, all you have to do is just add their exponents. So x to the a times x to the b is just x to the a plus b. So for example, let's just say we had x squared times x to the third. Well, x squared is the same thing as x times x, and x cubed is the same thing as x times x times x. So if we multiply these together, there's going to be 5x's. So we could write that as x to the fifth, which is the same thing as just adding 2 plus 3. The next rule deals with just dividing two terms that have the same base. So if we have x to the a divided by x to the b, all you have to do is just subtract the exponents. So for example, let's say we had x to the fifth divided by x squared. Well, we know that x to the fifth is equal to x times x times x times x times x, and x squared is just x times x. So if we canceled off two of the x's in the numerator with the two x's in the denominator, that would leave us with 3x's in the numerator, so x to the third, which is the same exact thing as just subtracting the exponents. 5 minus 2 is 3. And the final rule we're going to talk about today is called the power rule. The power rule just says that whenever you have a power raised to another power, you just multiply those two numbers. So, for example, let's say we had x squared to the third power. Well, if we add x squared to the third power, it really means x squared times x squared times x squared. Now, you could think about this one of two ways. Remember before when we said we're multiplying terms with the same base, all you have to do is just add these exponents. So 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. So that would leave us with x to the sixth. Or if you wanted to write them all out, x squared is x times x. So this x squared would be x times x, and so would this. So if you multiply all these together, all together we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 x's, so x to the 6. Or the shortest way, as we said, the power rule, is just to multiply the two powers. So 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples where we have to apply these rules. So if we take a look at the first example, we have x to the 4th times x to the 8th in the numerator. If you recall, whenever you're multiplying two terms with the same base, you just add the exponents. So 4 plus 8 is 12, so we get x to the 12th. In the denominator, we have x squared raised to the third power. When you have a power raised to another power, you just multiply those two numbers. So 2 times 3 is 6, so we get x to the 6th. And then finally, to simplify this, when you're dividing two terms with the same base, you're going to subtract the exponents. So since 12 minus 6 is 6, we're left with x to the 6th. Okay, number two, I'm going to actually first just rewrite this numerator exactly as is because I want to work with the denominator first. Now, since this entire expression in parentheses is being squared, we need to go through and individually square each term. So 6 squared would be 36. x to the fourth squared, well, we have a power raised to another power, so we have to multiply those. So 4 times 2 is 8, so we get x to the 8th. And with the y's, again, since we have a power raised to another power, we have to multiply those, so we get y to the 6th. Now from here, I'm just going to go through and simplify. All right, let's take a look at our numbers first. So 48 and 36. The biggest number that divides evenly into both of those would be 12. So 48 divided by 12 is 4, and 36 divided by 12 is 3. All right. Then when we look at our, let's look at each of our variables. x to the 10th divided by x to the 8th. We know we have to subtract the exponents. So since 10 minus 8 is 2, we get x squared. And that's going to go on top because since we started off with more x's on the top than on the bottom, that's where we're going to put those. Okay, now when we look at the y's, again, we're going to subtract the exponents. 16 minus 6 is 10. And since we started off with more y's in the numerator, that's where our y's are going to be left. So I'm just going to rewrite this because that 3 is a little off-center there. So this would be our final answer. 
In number three, our base is a number instead of a variable, but you're still going to treat it the same way. So if we take a look at the numerator, we have a power being raised to another power. So we're just going to multiply those. Three times four is 12. So in the numerator, we get a base of five being raised to the 12th power. In the denominator, both of our bases are five, so we're going to keep the base and add the exponents. And now to simplify this, since we're dividing two terms with the same base, you keep the base and you subtract the exponents. So 12 minus 10 is 2. And if you want to go a little further, 5 squared is just equal to 25. Okay, finally with number 4. Well, let's see. The entire first fraction is being squared, so we have to go through and individually square each of these terms. So if we were to do 4 squared, that gives us 16. And then m cubed squared, well, we have a power to a power, so we have to multiply those, so it gives us m to the 6th. Then in the denominator, 3 squared is 9. And n squared squared would be n to the 4th, because you have to multiply those exponents. Okay, so now I'm just going to bring down the second fraction. So we have an n over 2m to the 9th. Okay, so now we're just going to go through and we're going to simplify. So let me start with my numbers. Um, let's see. In the numerator, we have a 16. Now, that's not going to simplify with the 9 in our denominator, but it will simplify with the 2. 2 is 16 and 2 are both divisible by 2. So let's make this 16 and 8 and the 2. You could make a 1 or you can just cross it off all together. All right. So now what we have, this is actually going to get a little sloppy, so I'm going to just rewrite it. I'm going to bring everything over. On the top, we have an 8m to the 6th n. Okay, we could just make that into one fraction, because when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators. From the denominator, we have a 9, and I'm going to put this alphabetically, m to the 9th and n to the 4th. Okay, so now let's simplify this. 8 over 9 doesn't simplify, so let's leave the 8 on top and the 9 on the bottom. Now when we look at our m's, we have m to the 6 on the top and m to the 9th on the bottom. Now, you can think about this one of two ways. You could either, I usually just subtract the smaller number from the bigger number, so if you did 9 minus 6, that would give you 3, so we have m to the 3rd. And since we started off with more m's in the denominator of the fraction, that's where those three m's are going to go. So m to the third will go in the denominator. All right, um, then if we look at our n's, we also have more n's in the denominator than we do in the numerator. So this one n on top is going to cancel off with one of the n's on the bottom, so it's going to leave us with n to the third in the denominator. Or if you want to put a one here, you could say four minus one is three. And since we had more n's in the denominator, that's where those are going to go, so n to the third. Okay, so our final answer, I'm actually going to write it up here because I'm out of a little, I'm out of room, is 8 over 9m cubed n cubed.